Okay, hi everyone. I'm live. So, let's see how this goes. You know what? You have to be innovative. You have to try things. You have to be fun. So this is my attempt and I hope that this setup is pretty good. I tried to get myself in the shadow somewhat so I can see the screen. I'm going to get myself up on the, uh, on my, um, oh, there's a bee. I, like, I don't like bees, wasps. Anyway, <laughs> I'm a big chicken. So I'm just going to get myself on my iPad so I can see in the shadows a little bit here. If you guys have any questions or anything, give myself a few minutes here. Alrighty, let's see. I'm so happy. I, um, hi Allison. I um, got a huge shout out today from one of my mentors uh, that I had sent a couple of my tumblers to and she was just thrilled with them and that makes me so happy because she loves glitter just like I do and uh, I'm sure you guys uh, love glitter too. Oh, I hope this isn't going to be too hot for my, um, for my camera. Hmm, let's see. I might have to just readjust where this is positioned because my camera is right in the sun. Let's just see. Hmm. Okay, I think as long as I don't move that, should be okay. And I can adjust this as we go. Okay, okay, so, gosh, it's so hard. I wanted to be out in the sun, but to be honest with you, it's kind of hard to film in the sun. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of what the best position here would be. Because back there is where my garbage cans are. <laughs> I don't want you to see that. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to just put myself on live there so I can see. Okay. Anyway, so the title of this is Paint, oh, sorry, not Paint Your Christmas Tree. You can do that too, but it's Pour Your Christmas Tree. Ah, oh, boss, boss, go away. <laughs> sorry, I'll do that lots. It's Pour Your Christmas Tree and Pour Your Pumpkin. And um, I think I will have to adjust this because it's not even, but I will position things differently as we go along. So what I'm going to do is I have my mini Christmas tree and I'm going to, let me put my comments up on this screen and I'm going to get rid of them on this screen. There we go. So this is my mini Christmas tree. When you're doing anything with ceramics, you want to um, always start with a little sponge. I've just got a sponge and some water here. Okay. And uh, I just squeeze out the extra water and then I just take off any of the dust that's from the bisque. Okay. So I've already done that. I've done that to my Christmas tree and I've done it to my pumpkin. So right now this is a bare Christmas tree. What I have it on is this is what I use when I'm doing my tumblers and I want them to dry. It's actually a towel, paper towel holder and a pool noodle. So I've got that, it's quite stable, it's not gonna move around. What I'm gonna do, you guys don't freak out, I'm gonna go paint this black, okay? So give me two minutes. And I couldn't find any of my gloves, so I'll probably end up with spray paint on my hands as per normal, um, but whatever, you gotta have fun. Okay, here we go, I'm shaking up my spray paint. This is a new one I picked up at Home Depot. Um, Oh, it's white, it's not black. Okay, well that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna go get my black um, spray paint. Okay, hold on, I'll be right back. Just when you think you have everything, you don't. But that's okay. I'm back so I'm just doing a flat spray paint rust-oleum um, and just so you guys know thank you for joining me but just so you guys know I've never done this part too I've, ne I've done paint pouring but I've never done paint pouring on something like this and uh, I think it's gonna be amazing okay so I'll be right back I'm just gonna give this a little coat of black spray paint but don't worry, the tree won't end up black. This is just gonna settle into all the details and everything. Okay guys, hold on.
Okay, there's my tree. I'm gonna let it dry. I'm just gonna go do my pumpkin too. tools I have so things don't get dust and bits on it which I'll show you in a little bit. There we go. There's that. Oh, okay. Okay guys I'm back. Um, so here's my Christmas tree. Can you guys see it? You could absolutely paint this with acrylic paint black, but I just sprayed it uh, with black spray paint because why not, right? So I'm just letting it, it uh, sit here and dry a little bit, which will happen very quickly in this weather. So what I'm going to do um, is I am going to do a paint pour and I really can't see very well here. So bear with me if, uh, you have some questions or anything let me know please feel free to sprinkle the love and uh, I'd love to know if you're watching this live um, or if you're watching it on a replay that would be fantastic too so this is my let's see if I can turn this a little bit oh goodness okay let's see I don't want this to my camera to uh, overheat let's see I can do this without dropping my tree. I might have to move my camera after just because I can um, overheat and, and not work well. But anyway, so here we are. So what I'm doing, I'm just gonna set this aside now. I'm going to do a paint pour on my tree, okay? So I don't know if any of you have done paint pours before. They're super fun. I haven't done one for ages, but today I am in the mood to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm going to do more traditional colors with this tree. So I'm gonna do greens and um, golds. And yeah, let's just see what happens. Okay. So I've got uh, a phthalo green. Okay, I'm going to mix some of that up. I'm going to mix up some. The awesome thing about paint too is you can make your own colors. So I have some ivory black, so I'll probably make my phthalo green a little bit darker. I have um, my Liquitex gold, which is a really nice gold. I have another one too, so I might actually use that one. I think I might use this one. Uh, this is the um, soft gold, and this is De uh, Deco Art American um, Decor Metallics by Deco Art. So, so far I have green. I'm going to do a little bit of light green permanent. Now, when you're doing paint pouring, you have to remember the colors that you mix um, when they go together the two colors will mix together and make a third color. So you have to make sure that your colors um, go well together. Um, this is gonna be quite basic. So let's start, and I'm going to do, I think I'll do, instead of a white, I'm going to do um, unbleached titanium. So green, gold, white, maybe, maybe just a little bit of uh, raw sorry what is this burnt umber liquitex basics i just go on fly by the seat of my pants guys so let's just see how it goes has anyone ever done anything like this before anyone ever done paint pouring 
uh, on ceramics. Not me, but why not? So I have right here, I use these um, silicone uh, stir sticks I get from Just Resin uh, for my resin stirring. And the good thing about this, you can just wipe them off and reuse them again. So, alrighty. Let's see. So when you're doing paint pouring, you want to have um, consistency of paint that's not too runny, but not too thick. And how you do that is um, you use uh, a paint pouring medium. And what I use, I've just put this into this bottle because it's easier for me to pour. This is actually um, uh, Floetrol. This is Floetrol. So if anyone has any questions about any other products, just let me know and I'll help you out. So I have Floetrol and then I also have some water down here. I only have my little table out, so I don't have too much room. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna mix some of this gold, which is my favorite. Look at it. Look, it's so beautiful, you guys. Okay, and I just have these little cups. I'll mix a bit of this because I'm going to use this for my pumpkin too. Okay, so I've got mm, just under half a cup of this one. Put this one aside. And I'm going to use probably more green. So I'm going to take my phthalo green. Now you can either open the caps like this, but they get messy like that. <laughs> Or what I like to do, and I got this tip off of someone else on YouTube, um, is if possible, mm, I don't know if I can with this one. Mm, okay, well, never mind. Some of these you can actually unscrew the cap and then it's uh, a lot neater. Okay, so never mind what I just said. Scratch that. I'm going to just squeeze some of this in here. And I'll probably use some of this on my pumpkin too. And I don't have as much with this. And some paints are thicker, okay? The paints, these are like, um, these aren't like dollar store paints, but these aren't high-end paints. They're quite pigmented, which is nice. Um, and you don't need quite as much of it. So if it's thicker, you can see it's holding its shape in there. Um, I know that when I add my Floetrol, I'm going to need more Floetrol to make it as liquid as the other ones. So I won't add as much and we can always make more. Okay, um, now I'm gonna do light green permanent. See, isn't that weird? This is the same brand of paint, and yet I can undo that, no problem. Oh well, don't ask questions. <laughs> so same thing, I'm gonna add, hmm, I've got about that much in the cup, okay guys? And what I'm planning on doing is a dirty pour. And a dirty pour is where you take your paints and you layer them in a cup and then you're gonna pour it and I'll show you all of that, okay? So that's that, that's my third one. And my fourth one, I'm going to do just my unbleached titanium. Good, I have a good memory. I remember that one, <laughs> so that's good. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I'm pouring a Christmas tree, I'm pouring a pumpkin today. Could be a massive uh, hit, could be a massive fail, but sometimes I find the best things are when you try it and you, if it works, awesome. If not, it doesn't. We learn always something. I always say you never mistake, make mistakes in art. You just, you just, uh... oh, I thought someone was coming out. I'm getting low on my, my ivory black ivory black paint here so excuse the sounds I'll just put that one aside I have other blacks here I should have other blacks okay so maybe we'll go because I like to wing things we will go with Payne's gray instead of black which is a very dark bluish gray okay so I squeeze that in so now the fun part let's put my paints away because I can tend to be a uh, bit of a mess 
sorry, I use these paints in my paint classes, so sometimes uh, they get clogged up and not put away properly, but that's okay. Just paint, who cares, right? All right, again, this is my Floetrol put in my Simply Orange container because I love to reuse everything. Can you guys hear me okay? Just let me know if you can hear me okay, all right? So I'm gonna just mix about half and half. So I put about half Floetrol in that to my paint and then I'll adjust it as we go. Same here. I'd love to hear where you guys are watching from. That would be awesome. I live here in BC, so we're pretty fortunate. We've got gorgeous weather and I am totally taking advantage of it. Okay, so I've got my Floetrol in and now I'm going to mix and we'll see we want everything to be the same consistency. This is my gold that I made more of. So I'm just mixing it together. Oh, I just love this color. Okay, so I'm gonna do basic today, um, but if you're like me and you love glitter, I usually would put glitter in everything, but let's just go with this and see what happens. Okay, so that's my consistency. So you want it to be where it falls off and kind of makes a puddle. I don't know if you guys can see this without me spilling. It makes a puddle in the paint. It doesn't disappear right away. But I'm happy with that um, consistency. I'm just gonna make sure it's all mixed. But you know the fun thing about Floetrol? One trick is if you are doing any paint pouring, you don't have to mix it all the way. Kind of the fun thing about Floetrol because it dries clear. And this goes more so, well, maybe not more so, I don't know, we'll see. This goes along with um, doing some larger paintings. So when I do my larger paintings, one little trick is that you, oh wasps don't like those, is that you just kind of swirl your paint, but I'm just going to mix this a little bit so that you don't completely stir it and what it will do, it will give you more of a marble effect, okay? Now, this is the light green, so it's quite bright, but I'm keeping in mind that it's going to mix with whatever color is next to it when we're doing paint pouring. Okay, so let's check this consistency. Okay, so see how it's thicker? I need to add a little bit of water so that matches the consistency of my gold. If you're re-watching this, guys, and um, you know how to do this, feel free to forward ahead here so you don't have to go through this. But see, I made that a little bit too runny. But that's okay. We'll figure it out. Actually, that's pretty darn good. It's still a little thick, actually. So I'm just gonna continue to mix it, make sure it's completely mixed. And I'm sorry if anyone's talking to me or asking questions uh, with the sun in my eyes, I can't see very well. Okay, let's just double check that. So that's good. See how it's kind of dripping off my, my stir stick? That's a good consistency. I'm going to put that aside and just wipe this. this. These are my silicone stir sticks. I just use these for my resin and I get these particular ones from just resin. Okay, and now is the phthalo green. I'm just going to stir that up. See how thick that is? See what the... the uh, Liquitex Basics, they are a bit of a thicker paint, so you definitely need to add a little bit more medium, and then I like to add just a tiny bit of water. If it's too thin, it will just run off of your project. So, see how it's not, mm, not too bad actually. 
Let me take that back. It takes a little bit longer to drip, so I'm gonna put the tiniest bit of water in. There we go. I'm so excited to do this, you guys. I've never done this on a project like this, but today is a paint pouring day. And once I have an idea in my head, I cannot stop thinking about it. Don't know about you guys, if any of you are like that. Okay, so I've got my light green, my phthalo green, my gold. This is going to be my unbleached parchment. No, sorry, unbleached titanium Liquitex. And I also have something that you can use, which I did not get out today. I don't have my keys, so I can't even run and get it. It's in my garage. Um, you can buy um, like an iridescent medium. I believe lots of companies make it. I think I have one from Liquitex. And so you can put that into any of your matte colors and they become iridescent. So that's a really good tip. You don't have to buy all different kinds of paints. Just a little bit of water there. Just you buy your basic paints and then you can add your iridescence. Also, you know, you don't have to have all of these colors. If you know your, your, you know your paint wheel, your primary colors and so on, you can make any color that you want actually. You don't have to buy them. You can make them. Okay, let's see. All right, I like that. It's flowing nicely. Well, maybe a tiny bit thick, teensy tiny bit. Like this is danger zone, because if you put too much water, then it's too thin, but that's okay. All right, let's go with it just for the fact that I'm live. And as much as I love you guys watching me, you probably don't want to stay on here all day watching me. <laughs> Okay, last one I'm gonna mix is the, um, you probably should wear gloves doing this, but I couldn't find mine and I was too excited, so I just went ahead and did it. So this is my combination of ivory black and Mars gray. So I like to add uh, a darker color, it adds depth, and um, you just can be uh, sparing on it. The thing about paint pouring is you never know what things are gonna turn out like, so. It's all like a mystery. It's like a, a gift. Okay, so let's see. Mm, little thick. See how it hesitates coming off of my stir stick? Teensy tiny bit of water, not too much. Good. Okay. Now, I'm thinking ahead here. Let me think of what I'm doing. So what I'm gonna do, you should have this on a level surface just so that it, uh, the paint, when it flows down, it flows down level. Right now I'm on a bit of a tilted surface just because I didn't want to um, be fully in the sun here. So, okay, this is when magic happens. So excited. You guys ready for some magic? Let me just put my water away. Okay, so guys, this is called a dirty pour. I don't know how many of you guys know much about pouring here, but this is called a dirty pour. And so I take my cup, just gonna wipe this up. There's a bit of flow control here. Okay, I take my cup. I'm going to start adding some colors. Now, the first color that you add is going to be the last color that comes out of the cup. So I think that what I want is I want to have more green than anything. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna just pour into my cup a little bit of green. And then I'm going to add some gold. Can you guys see? Am I in a good spot here? You guys all good? You can see some gold. Then I'm going to add a little bit of my Mars Gray and Ivory Black mixture. Pour that there. I hope this is enough. I didn't even really think about that, but we'll find out. Okay, a little bit more gold, because girl, you can never have too much gold and glitter. Okay, then I'm going to add some, so this is just fun. You just kind of make your own 
uh, mixture. Now I'm adding the bright green, which is going to add, which is going to mix with those other colors, okay? And we'll add some unbleached titanium, not too much, a little bit. And then I'm going to start all over again. Now I'm going to put some of the phthalo green. Uh, what did I do? I think gold. A little bit of black. And then you just kind of make a layer sandwich here, guys. So much fun. A little bit of green. This is the light green. A little bit of white because the white and the green will mix together and make a white, a lighter green, I should say. Okay, some more gold. If I don't catch any questions you guys have, just let me know, I'll, po I'll look after, okay? Okay, there's some more dark green. Let's add some more gold. Pretty much the end of the gold. And so what you put last is going to be what goes on the bottom. Did that make sense? What you put last is gonna be Yeah, I can't remember. We'll figure it out. We'll find out soon enough. Okay, got my black. See how this is turning into like a layer sandwich? Okay, almost done. Um oops, let's see. Put some more green. Oh, you know what I didn't I didn't add any brown oh well that's okay we don't need brown <laughs> brown who needs brown okay and got a tiny bit more of this green so there's different ways that that you can pour guys it um there's different ways, but this is just going to be a straight on dirty pour because I'm learning as I go here, just like you. And hopefully, if you're afraid to do these kind of things because you think that you're not creative, you'll find out that anyone can do it. Okay, and just so that I have green at the top, I'm just going to use my stir stick and get the last of that green out, put it on there. And let's do this one. Okay. And just because, you know, I love gold, let's do this gold and then I think we're good. Okay. Just going to set those aside now. Then we take a deep breath because it can be scary when you're doing something different, but it's fun. It's all fun. Okay. Look at, look at this, you guys. It's like layers and layers of beautiful stuff. Okay. So let's see. So if any of you joined me late, we're doing my... I'm just gonna ang angle this down, see if you guys can see it. Let me just check on my iPad here. We're doing a pour your Christmas tree and I'm doing it uh, on a mini tree. And I have my paper towel holder with a little pool noodle and I use these when, I'm, um, when I am painting, sorry, not painting, but doing my, my uh, resin cups, okay. So we're just going to go for it. If I was a good 